Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I am here to bring y'all a bookish unboxing. So I have two things to unpackage today. One was sent to me by a publisher. I know what this book is. Second book in a series and then I have this big book outlet box that I got during my Cyber Monday splurge. The only thing I bought for Cyber Monday. It's pretty torn up. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to address the change in location. Um, yes, I am back home for winter break. These are my shelves that I have back home. I have three bookshelves in my room, if y'all didn't know. And this one is solely my hardback books that I have read. And um, I'm actually planning on rearranging everything. I don't know if I'm gonna film that just because it's really hard to film me rearranging three bookcases at once when they're not all side by side together. So I don't know if I'm going to be filming that part. We'll see what happens. Today I'm going to be unboxing these books that I bought. I don't know anything about any of them. I don't remember what I bought on Book Outlet. We'll see <laughs> what I bought. I have no idea. <laughs> and don't forget to stick around towards the end of the video to see who my small booktuber shout out is going to be. So first I'm gonna start out with um, my package from the publisher that I got. Okay, so we have Blood Moon Part 2 by S. Yervati. If y'all would have seen by my uh, November wrap-up, I read Blood Moon Part 1 by S. Yervati in November. I had some mixed feelings on it, but then towards the end, the last chapter, we got introduced to a new character, and I was like so excited about that. That was like the saving grace, I think, for the last book, and like I really want to read this one because of that one character that got introduced at the end. So I'm really actually excited for this. I gave a I believe three out of five stars to the first one. Too many books to talk about today, so if you don't know what this series is about, I have no idea what genre it is, no idea, like, I don't know, like, it has some romance in it. I don't, I don't actually know how to categorize this book, so if you want to know the summary of the first book, please just go check out my November wrap-up because it took me so long to summarize it. I literally read the back of the book for y'all, and, uh, this is part two, so I can't do that for this one, sorry. Okay, now we have this big bad boy. Yeah, it's pretty ripped open. Don't know what happened there. I ordered these to my hometown because I, because they were gonna come in during finals week and I did not want to get distracted during finals week. And I took my last final today and came home. Opening boxes is not my specialty. Whew. I'm gonna put the books down here because I don't want to hold this big box. Okay, 11. I got 11 books, whoa. All I remember that I'm getting is that I got a new version of Jane Eyre and I wanna collect more Jane Eyre books since it is my favorite book. So I know I got that, so I can't wait to look at that. Oh my goodness, there's so many books in here. Ah! First book that we have is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. I have heard so many things about this book on a booktube. Whoa, look at that back. That's pretty. This cover is gorgeous. So I only know a little bit about it. Basically, I know that this is kind of like a quarter of Thorns and Roses in a sense. Um, we deal with Faye. So I believe that a woman in here, our main character female, is a human and she is an artist and um, she paints a Faye prince i think and the fae can't like perform artistically they can't do anything artistic i don't think and so they have to hire humans to paint them or do stuff for them play music for them probably she paints mortal sorrow in his eyes a weakness that could cost him his throne and even his life so i guess it's the repercussions of that but i have heard just so many great things about it and i really hope to get into it soon it's not even that big next is heartless by kat martin to escape her life of poverty as a tenant farmer's daughter ariel summers made a bargain with the devil she would become the earl of reveals mistress in exchange for the schooling and refinements of a lady but she couldn't foresee the earl's untimely death or her own disturbing attraction to his bastard son and heir, Justin Ross. Justin never meant to demand payment from the tempting young woman his father had so callously planned to ruin, but her innocent allure 
Thor, how do you say that? I don't know, provoked his ruthless nature and he vowed he would have her in his bed. Seduction was his plan, but the Earl of Greville never suspected Ariel's innocent passion would awaken emotions he had long believed dead. When mistrust and betrayal threaten the fragile happiness the two of them have found, Justin must convince Ariel that he isn't a heartless man she believes. This cover was really pretty. That's what drew my eye to it. I haven't read a lot of historical fictions in a while, so I'm really excited for this one. Another historical romance is The Groom Wore Plaid by Gail Callan. Kaylin, I'm sorry. Maggie McCollum's dreams about her new fiance aren't the romantic sort. It's not just that she was bartered to Owen Duff like a piece of property to end a clan feud. She's also hunted by premonitions of his death on their upcoming wedding day. Yet the exasperating Highlander won't let her call it off even though his life and his clan are both in jeopardy. Owen has wanted Maggie in his bed since his first glimpse of her years ago. If their union restores peace between their clans, so much the better. But while lusting after another chief's sister has its risks, growing to trust Maggie is far more dangerous. Owen is falling deeply in love with the one woman he cannot hope to claim and survive. Again, another historical romance book that just seemed really good and this cover was really, really pretty. So again, I want to read this one soon. So many books that I want to read. How am I gonna find the time? Next we have The Last Namsara by Kristen Cicerelli, I think, hopefully. And also, look at this shiny cover. It's gorgeous. I don't know anything about this book. I believe it's like fantasy. I don't like to read the summaries for um, fantasy books. It just says, a forbidden love, a kingdom at war, a secret that will change everything. All I know is that's a, I think, I think a fantasy book. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't want to read the synopsis because I love to go into fantasy books blind. I don't know anything about this book. Sorry, I can't give you a synopsis. <laughs> I don't know anything. Next is Firestorm, a Dark King's novel by Donna Grant. Dimitri lives to protect the secret of the Dragon Kings from the human race. Bound by a bond stronger than blood to the kings, Dimitri uses his strength and prowess to defend a thousand years year old secret. But when an oh-so-sexy, slightly absent-minded archaeologist wanders into his mists, Dimitri will have to give up his rules and give in to desire. When Dr. Faith Reynolds stumbles upon an ancient skeleton that appears to come from a dragon, she's completely taken aback. A woman of science, there's no way in her mind that this mythological creature can exist. But when a devilishly handsome man named Dimitri intercepts her path to uncovering the truth, Faith's curiosity turns into all-consuming passion. She has never felt this way about any man before, but when Dimitri reveals his biggest secret, can she learn to love the man as well as the dragon within? This seems like such a great paranormal romance book. I can't wait. Okay. Next, I got um, a Christina Lauren book because y'all know I am on a Christina Lauren high right now. I love their books so much. This is called Love and Other Words. Okay, so basically it's about a girl named Macy and she's planning to get married to an older man, planning their wedding and everything. She's had a pretty normal life until her old flame, first love, Elliot, comes back around, and I think it's the repercussions of that. I honestly didn't read the summary for this book when I bought it, just because it's Christina Lauren, and I am such on a Christina Lauren high right now, you have no idea. Roomies is my favorite book of the year, so far. I don't know if that'll change in the next couple days. <laughs> this sounds good. I love Christina Lauren. Next, we have Falling in Deeper by Shayla Black. I'm really bad at reading names, apparently. After a violent tragedy nearly destroyed her, Lily Taylor ran away, changed her name, and started over. When her deadly nemesis resurfaces to eliminate his loose end, she turns to the last man she should trust, a stranger with a history of violence and an intoxicating sexuality she can't refuse. Though strong-armed into locating Lily to help put away a drug lord, ex-con Stone Stutter isn't anyone's snitch. When he finds the terrified beauty, he vows to keep her safe, but he isn't sure he has the strength to shield her from his own desires. As an unquenchable fire sparks between Lily and Stone, her tormentor stalks ever closer and she must overcome her darkest fear to survive. Can she trust the bond and she and Stone have formed as they're falling in deeper? A romance book. I'm on like such a romance high right now. I really want to read this one too. I have no idea which ones I'm going to read. Okay, um, next. Ooh, this is a big book. Okay, this is The Decent proposal by Kemper Donovan. I have never heard of this before. I don't remember what this is about. Okay, this is interesting. Just read this. Okay, so there are two main characters, Elizabeth and Richard. They're just living their normal lives. Richard's like a famous person, I think, and Elizabeth is trying to 
um, become a new partner in a law firm. Then one day they get this anonymous note from somebody um, saying that they will inherit a million dollars. Each of them gets half of the million dollars. If they agree to spend two hours of one week hanging out together for a whole entire year and they don't know each other at all so they're like do you want the money you gotta hang out with this person I mean <laughs> so maybe it's like someone like realizes that they should be together so they like set these people up even though they've never met before this sounded really good really good this sounds so good I've not heard anything about this book I'm not seeing this book anywhere this looks so good next is breathe into me by Sarah Fox how did my life get so broken it's a question Lacey St. James asked herself every day stuck raising her little brother in a trailer park where she works a dead-end job at a grocery store she has a stalker ex-boyfriend a bad reputation and no way out and then she meets Everett Ward who changes her entire life. Everett is an outsider who is house sitting for a family mansion off the coast and for reasons Lacey can't understand he's completely transfixed by her. He seems determined to show her that life can offer more than she'd ever hoped for if only she believes in herself. She desperately yearns to trust him but what happens when she finds out that everything he's told her is a lie. Ooh, that sounds mysterious. It's a short romance book. It feels kind of weird though. The texture's weird. I think I just like was in the mood for buying romance books when I was on there during Cyber Monday, I guess. Just romance books after romance books. I mean, nothing wrong with that. Okay, we're almost done. Got two books left. Ooh, this is a short one. Okay, we have Kids Like Us by Hilary Rail. 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 Maybe. Sorry. Diagnosed with autism as a child, Martin has grown used to seeing the world differently from other people. Back in Los Angeles, he attends a special school for kids on the spectrum, kids like him. He never really mixed with neurotypical students until his mother enrolls him in the local high school summer session where she directs a movie on location in a rural French town. As school gets underway, Martin thinks he's fitting in and making friends. For the first time, he falls in love with a girl. She appears to him to be a character magically come to life from his favorite book. But Martin's idolized bubble pops with deafening sadness when he realizes his new friends and even his beloved may not be genuine, just attracted by the Hollywood glamour his family represents. Will Martin ever connect? How can an outsider kid like him find a way in and still remain true to himself? This sounds so good. Ever since I read The Kiss Quotient, I've been wanting to read another book from somebody on the spectrum. I loved reading from Stella's point of view from The Kiss Quotient. It's really short too, like 200 something pages. It looks so cute and sweet, but like also will probably give me a lot of information about people on the spectrum, so. I think I'm gonna love this. And the last book is the new edition of Jane Eyre that I got. <laughs> Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. If y'all didn't know, Jane Eyre is my favorite book. I have a copy of Jane Eyre, but it's like not that pretty. And I got it from Book Outlet a couple years ago too, but it wasn't like a collector's edition like this. It even has a little bookmark. <gasps> I'm so excited to have this. This is beautiful. I want to probably collect like every edition. Jane Eyre is my favorite, so I really want to collect more. And I'm really glad that I did this. Look how beautiful this is. It's gorgeous. Okay, so today's small booktuber, booktube newbie that I'm shouting out today is Katie from Book Bliss. I recently stumbled across her channel and she created her channel just a couple weeks ago. And um, I've already been watching so many of them. I love her videos. Her bookshelves are beautiful by the way she's very much into i believe romance books and she loves the throne of glass books as well you can see i'm throne of glass trash so if you want to go check out her channel please do i love watching her videos so 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 much so there you have it those are some books that i got sent and bought recently it's gonna be the last books that I buy for a while. I know I said I was on a book buying ban. I've broken it so many times. <laughs> I gotta save my money. I'm just not thinking when I see a book for a really cheap price. Sorry. But yeah, I think those were 12, 12 books. Wow, that's a lot of books. Hopefully it will keep me occupied for a while. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you've read any of the books that I talked about today or if you plan to. I'd love to know. Thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye!